EE is the largest mobile network operator in the UK by customer number, and with this inevitably comes substantial capacity demand, especially in built-up urban environments, which up to this point EE has managed through deploying a large amount of spectrum as 4G on both the 1800MHz band and the 2600MHz band. In terms of 1800MHz or band 3, they've deployed up to 30MHz paired as 4G, and in terms of the 2600MHz, up to 35MHz paired. So really quite a substantial spectrum when you add that up, because it's 65 megahertz paired of spectrum and in many areas this has also been supplemented slightly by 5 megahertz paired of 800 megahertz in order to provide additional indoor coverage so that's 70 megahertz paired however the other three operators have been aggressively deploying 2100 megahertz as 4g having repurposed it from 3g in a process called refarming, but we hadn't seen any from EE. Well, that was until two days ago when Jake visited Cardiff and just happened to come across some 4G 2100 megahertz from EE, which I'm not jealous about at all, really. I mean, not only is it 4G 2100 megahertz on EE, which is a first, but it's also 4T4R as well, and from a screenshot, you can see that four transmit antennas are being used on the mast side for this 4G 2100 MHz as well. So in this video today, I'm going to talk about EE's 4G 2100 MHz as well as how they managed to achieve it by using some brand spanking new remote radio units from Huawei, which are the dual band 5507 variety, which we haven't seen used before in the UK. In order for us to understand how EE broadcast 4G on 2100 MHz, it's necessary to know how their 2100 MHz spectrum is organised. And to do this, I will start off by going back a few years before EE was formed from the merger of Orange and T-Mobile. Orange and T-Mobile each had 10 MHz paired of 2100 MHz spectrum and with this spectrum they could broadcast two carriers of 3G each. So T-Mobile had the UARFCNs of 10761 and 10786. Meanwhile Orange had 10811 and 10836 which I have marked on my diagram here showing the downlink spectrum only. So then EE was formed from the merger of Orange and T-Mobile and this then gave them access to that entire 2100 MHz spectrum of the two operators combined totaling 2x20 MHz of contiguous spectrum and that then allowed EE to broadcast four carriers of 3G in urban areas using the combination of the T-Mobile in inverted commas spectrum and the orange in inverted commas spectrum. However, over time, 3G load has been decreasing with the increasing penetration of devices which support 4G, as well as 4G calling meaning that the amount of voice traffic on 3G has been falling and therefore the possibility to use some of this spectrum more efficiently for 4G has therefore sprung up and that's what has happened. Because EE has typically sort of lent a little bit towards the T-Mobile network as the modernisation and consolidation process has occurred it's unsurprising that it's the orange 3G carriers that have been refarmed for this additional spectrum on 4G. In the spectrum that the orange carriers of 10811 and 10836 would have been, the 4G carrier of EARFCN 547 takes its place with a 10 MHz paired bandwidth. 
which is illustrated on the lower diagram. So now that we've seen the spectrum that EE is broadcasting this 4G2100 MHz on, it's necessary to talk a little bit about how they're doing it from an equipment perspective. 2100 MHz 3G on EE up to this point has been by and large broadcast through a shared MBNL Nokia Flexi stack which is 3G only hardware and broadcast the 3G 2100 MHz for EE as well as usually for 3 as well. However, clearly in this case we're wanting to use this 2100 MHz spectrum for 4G and therefore those won't do. So an alternative approach has been developed which is using some of Huawei's brand new dual band remote radio units which are the model number of 5507 and these are dual band 1800 and 2100 MHz remote radios so each unit simultaneously emits 1800 MHz and 2100 MHz. They're also software defined radios so they can broadcast multiple technologies simultaneously on each band as well so for example 2G and 4G on 1800 MHz and 3G and 4G on 2100 MHz if need be. They are 2T2R each, although if you pair them up you then get 4T4R, which is obviously a good indication of how they're achieving the 4T4R in this case. And they also have 40 MHz of IBW on each band, which is clearly suitable for the 2100 MHz and is only just a little bit less than EE's holding of 1800 MHz spectrum, so will very much suit them in that department as well. So let's move on to what one of the sites look like. Now I lent Jake one of the cameras before he went to Cardiff, just because you never know which kind of mask there might be that will be interesting to photograph. And that proved to be quite a useful decision in terms of working out what EE has been doing with these sites for the 2100MHz refarm, especially as Cardiff also has a lot of other spectrum deployed on it. So this is one of the sites in Cardiff which kind of is quite a good example to talk about in more detail. So it has two antennas per sector, a dual band Catherine antenna and a triple band Huawei one. Now the dual band Catherine antenna going back a few years would have been broadcasting EE's 2G, 4G, 1800MHz as well as the 4G, 1800MHz for 3 which it will likely still be doing and then the EE and 3, 3G. Meanwhile the Huawei antenna is the newer one and carries much of the fun stuff that we're interested in today. So as EE is using these new dual band remote radios to do 4G on 2100 MHz which also do 4G on 1800 MHz there's no need to keep the 1800 MHz going through the old Catherine panels especially as that would have been just 2T2R so those feeders are removed and those ports will be spare now meanwhile the other ports on the Catherine dual band antenna will still be carrying 3G 1800 and also 3's 3G and possibly EE's 3G 2100MHz dependent on whether they've moved the 2100MHz entirely over to the dual band remote radio units yet. Not completely sure about that, they might still be keeping some capability on the flexi stack although going forward they will almost certainly be moving the entirety of their 2100MHz operation over to their own remote radios due to obviously the 4G capability as well as just the operational flexibility of having your own equipment, entirely your own equipment, broadcasting your signal. The Huawei triple band antenna is the more interesting one because it carries this 4T4R 4G 2100 MHz as well as actually 4 4T4R 1800 MHz because Clearly they're using a pair of those remote radios in each sector to do the 4T4R 2100 MHz, so therefore they're the 4T4R 1800 MHz as well. But this site also has 2600 MHz on it, which is provided through a, another Huawei RRU on each sector, and these are 2T4R. 
They don't have full transmit capability, but they do have full receive. And therefore, if you do a bit of adding up, this, this won't add up because we've got a triple band antenna with six ports and we've got four feeders coming from the two dual band remote radios, two feeders each, and then four feeders from the 2T4R remote radio for 2600. And in order to resolve this, a diplexer is used on the middle ports. So there's the 1800 and megahertz from one remote radio going into one set of ports, and the next set of ports carries the diplex 1800 and 2100 megahertz from the 5507 remote radio, and then the 2600 from the 2600 megahertz remote radio, and then the third set of ports carries the next set of feeders from the 2600 megahertz remote radio unit. So actually it's a very simple layout and on this schematic I have just shown 4G 2100 MHz going through the new remote radio units however they might have all the 3G going through that as well. All in all this allows for a massive amount of capacity in Cardiff and for that matter the further cities they deploy in because it's adding on top of their existing spectrum deployment as I introduced at the beginning of the video. So if you take Cardiff as an example, which is a pretty much fully featured deployment, you have the 5 MHz paired of 800 MHz bearing the EARFCN of 6225, followed then by the 30 MHz paired of 1800 MHz in two carriers, so 20 MHz paired on the EARFCN of 1667, and a further 10 MHz paired on 1811. Meanwhile, we then get the 2100 MHz, which is... 10 MHz paired, clearly, on EARFCN of 547. And then 2600 MHz, which is 35 MHz paired across two carriers. The first one being EARFCN of 3350 at 20 MHz paired. And the second one being 15 MHz paired at EARFCN of 3179. So that's 80 MHz of spectrum total. And if you remember earlier, I said that the MAS was not only 44R on the 2100 MHz, but also on the 1800 MHz. And of course these have 30 MHz paired on the 1800 MHz for 4G, and the 10 MHz paired of 4G for 2100 MHz. So therefore 40 MHz paired is 44R 4G as well, so half of the spectrum. And that's really a lot of spectrum as 44R. There are suggestions that there are going to be quite a big deployment of these new Huawei remote radio units. Certainly I've seen evidence of it in London, which of course you would expect with the high demand due to the density of central London. So thanks for watching this video. It's quite a major milestone really, because this, this marks the point at which all the mobile network operators in the UK have 4G on 2100 MHz and are therefore re-farming that band, which might make us actually one of the first in Europe and the world. I've got to investigate that a little bit more, but certainly a lot of European markets that I know about have only really just started re-farming. They've maybe got one operator or two doing 4G 2100 megahertz on a very limited scale. So this is really quite a nice, quite a nice point to be at really, where we've got all four. In terms of thanks to the video, I have to really give massive thanks to Jake because without the pictures he took and screenshots and everything that he did when he was there, this video would clearly not have been possible and we still probably wouldn't know about the presence of the 4G 2100 MHz on the EE either, so massive thanks to him. And in terms of videos coming up, it's going to be Ofcom Spectrum Auction because clearly that's the hot topic at the moment. So hopefully I will see you then. Leave a comment if you feel the wish to because it's quite interesting just discussing, having discussions in the comment section and the like. And yeah, hope to see you on the next one.